thank you so much for joining the conversation today. How do you comply with um, any anti-money laundering regulations um, and within the private payments uh, space? Could you elaborate on that? Whatever rules uh, would set, be set up by the issuer, the issuer is in control of the digital cash wallets and, and they set up rules for that. Uh, you, you could have rules for, uh, as, as I was describing my presentation, that I think private citizens should be allowed uh, some integrity uh, versus the banks. Um, but th there are rules for, you know, if, if there are larger transactions, you're not allowed to do that. So we could easily, easily have a rule within the digital cash wallet to say that if the transaction amount is higher than a certain uh, uh, amount, then uh, it's not possible uh, to do uh, a mask transaction, as I said, to split it in two. But, but it could also be that if you pay internationally, one of the rules international for anti-money laundering is that you, you need to get a uh, sort of a, um, a, a response to say that uh, this is sort of uh, not, you know, this is white money that you're paying with, that, 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 it, that needs to happen. And it has to happen in real time. What, what we would do is, is to provide that response sort of in the same way as we could download money to the digital cash wallet when you are online you can get that um, assurance from the issuer so you can uh, get that across uh, at the moment of payment uh, to the uh, to the receiver so we, we we can implement rules which would comply with uh, the um, anti-money laundering sort of rules that the regulator would set up uh, could you please clarify what are the main advantages of the account-based rails and um, um, you know versus token-based rails um, if you could elaborate on that that would be very useful for us well yeah um, well, we're very used to account-based rails that that's what's already there that's sort of what all um, all sort of uh, countries are running on uh, the digital rails today where you have digital money it's it's all debit and credit on account-based rails so this we're very used to that there is a new kid on the block where you are running on sort of crypto uh, with cryptocurrencies and it needs to be tokens. And it's sort of a, this is something different. And it was created, I think, the cryptocurrencies to actually counter uh, central bank control. Uh, and and you, you would sort of still have a value which uh, is not backed by a central bank. There is still a value there. And it's either backed by the blockchain itself. Uh, so you can have trust in that. Or if you are a central bank, then you can you can have a piece of you can have a piece of a token that the the, um, the central bank then also is guaranteed. So it's it is possible to do either route, and and it's a choice here that either you you running on the the current legacy rails, and you can because there is no sort of security issue on the online side. Uh, it is the offline side that uh, you you are worried about, and and I I, I think the that the central banks are worried that oh how are we going to handle this when the uh, the digital our, our notes uh, our bank notes are going out there to be digital uh, with people and 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 they're thinking we have to have absolute control and we we sort of have to do it very similarly as we have always done it with uh, with sort of bank notes but in a digital form but if the again if this is solved already uh, the offline part securely then you, you really have to question whether you want to do uh, a token-based rails because you would require uh, a production facility at the central banks that needs to be new and installed. And you have to ask all the banks to upgrade uh, to be able to support uh, a new type of money format that is sort of using these sort of value tokens. That's not there today but that will need to, to come. I think uh, th that's sort of the main difference. Either you go with legacy, what you have already, and run with that, or you implement sort of something which is uh, uh, a new rail. And, and you have a, two choices there. Either you could do it blockchain-based, uh, similar as the cryptos, but as you are a central bank, uh, you are the central node of trust, which a, a typical sort of private uh, blockchain type of approach would would lack do you really want to go for um, uh, for a blockchain in that that sense or do you prefer to uh, just do it in in, an, in another way um, just using sort of cryptocurrency but uh, without implementing as blockchains so th there are a couple of choices here and, and I think 
I'm sort of here to highlight that there are choices to be made, implementation choices. And and, and I think you don't have to default into uh, something here. And I think the, the fact that you actually can run it on the, the legacy rails of today, I, I think it's, it's not well known at the moment in the industry uh, that you can use the account-based rails. Of course, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, um, another question uh, as a follow-on on this, uh, how would a central bank uh, issue digital currency uh, without using a value um, tokens? Um, could you explain that as well? That would be the simplest thing in the world. They will just uh, have a meeting in the morning and then they will deposit that money on a, on a, sort of their, their bank account and then come and ask the, now we've put sort of a, a, dish, a, a new currency, new money, they create it basically, and then they ask the commercial bank to come get it. Uh, and then there is a debit and credit. So the, uh, the banks would basically deposit at the central bank account uh, some... Um, digital money that is already in this in the system today sort of a digital swedish krona uh and then they will get uh the e-krona back here in sweden sort of which is sort of then backed and uh, guaranteed by the central bank but but it, it's sort of no um you don't need a production facility you just deposit money on an account of course excellent and uh what type of rail uh, does um you know crunchfish prefer what, what, what are your views on this I would love to see uh, some central banks actually going for the account-based rails simply because I think the implementation time will be uh, so much faster. And for that reason, I think it makes so much more sense to actually get it out there. Because if you have central banks which feel that our national currency is under some threat from cryptocurrencies uh, or that, like I live in Sweden, uh, our cash is disappearing. We don't have that uh, left. We need to be quick. Uh, in our country in order to implement something which behaves like cash. And for that reason, I, I would prefer them to go for uh, the fastest route, uh, which is thought then an, an account based. But, but again, um, we, we are certainly working with partners that have done a token based solution as well. And we are still that offline um, solution for them, that, that, that digital cash solution. So in some sense, I don't really care, but I... Um, I, I think I, I, would, I would probably take the red pill at the moment to get going. And you can always swap to the blue pill later. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And you also mentioned blockchain. And of course, you know, there has been a lot of, you know, concentration on the blockchain. And of course, at the symposium also, we, 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 we spoke um, a lot um, about uh, blockchain. Uh, we have seen various businesses, um, you know, experimenting and implementing blockchain ledger for various purposes uh, to record, uh, to, um, you know, to transact. Um, uh, to, of course, um, you know, verify trades. Uh, what is your view on the blockchain um, and, um, you know, regarding, you know, uh, using the blockchain uh, for currency technology? What do you think um, is, is going to be the, the solution out there? I, I think it makes a lot of sense to, if you are like Bitcoin or any other sort of uh, private scheme, which is an international sort of scheme, I think it makes sense because you don't have a, that central node. No one is backing it. The trust is in the blockchain. But if you are a central bank, you are that sort of sole authority or you, you can't go bankrupt. You are guaranteeing basically that currency that you put on, uh, on the, uh, out in, in, in your country. So why complicate matters? That, that would be my simple. Why would you go for a blockchain which takes enormous amount of energy to do transactions? Typically, the, the schemes are, uh, you know, order of magnitudes more slow than the uh, account based sort of type of uh, system. Or if you don't use blockchain, but still are token based, you can still do order of magnitude faster transaction. So why would you? I, I think there is a hype around uh, blockchain and, and it, it is for these international sort of cryptocurrencies that are potentially threatening the uh, central banks. But in your own country, uh, protecting your own currency, you are that sole, sole authority and, and you are that level of trust. Um, you, you don't need uh, a blockchain structure in order to uh, instill trust in, uh, in your digital currency. So, that, so I, I think it, for CBDC, I, my view is that blockchain is, a, um, is an unnecessary technological hype that is sort of not needed. Thank you so much for sharing your views on this. And uh, you mentioned um, in your presentation the infrastructure and building the infrastructure between the commercial banks and central banks. 
Um, so my question is, how do we achieve financial inclusion? And uh, I think, you know, the cluster of questions come here. Um, you know, how do we uh, achieve the universal usage? Um, how do you approach uh, certain demographics, uh, for example, those uh, with um, lower internet penetration? Uh, could you elaborate on this, please? Sure. Yeah. You know, I, as I said, I, I think one one of the key aspects is the offline piece, really, that that the 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 sort of payment service that you use absolutely needs to work offline uh, because there is a lot of uh, you know, I live in Sweden. We have uh, we, our sort of connectivity is so great. So we, we've stopped using cash more or less. Uh, but that's not the case in every single country in the world. There is sort of connectivity issues all the time. Uh, for that reason, you, you need a solution that uh, can work offline, but also can work in, on any bearer device. It, it needs to be, be able to work on, an, on a smartphone within an app, but it could also be on a feature phone. Many, many countries, the, not the whole population, uh, are on smartphones. They are on feature phones. But then you also have people in your country, this could be uh, maybe very, very young people. If, if someone is going to go and buy their candy, uh, do you want to equip them with a mobile phone if they're four year old? Then you, you would like sort of like a cash card. Uh, so it's just a card that you need to be able to top up in an offline mode. And then you can go and uh, sort of transact with that card. It could also be elderly people. And it could also be people who are maybe have a hard time. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you can't read and write, it might be difficult to actually use a mobile phone to do transaction. So financial inclusion is, is all about then that that service that you have must be able to to basically run on uh, any type of bearer device, uh, cards, feature phones, smartphones. I think that's important and working in an offline mode. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it was uh, uh, delightful to uh, have a conversation with you today and um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Julia. No, I really appreciate the time to uh, come out and speak here at uh, your uh, wonderful organization. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much.